Hey everybody, this is Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell with another one of our Okla Proud interviews. Uh, today, someone that, that I work with, really sometimes on a daily basis, uh, Amber Sharples uh, with the Arts Council, uh, one of the organizations that's underneath uh, my role as your Secretary of Tourism and Branding. And when we're going through this, the arts matter. I'm a, I'm a huge believer in the arts, uh, kind of grew up in the performing arts, imagine that. Uh, that, that I would be uh, in that in that line of work uh, early on. Uh, almost went to LA and did that whole thing. Thank goodness I did not. Uh, and I stayed in Oklahoma. But uh, Amber does all the arts. Uh, not we're not talking we're we're talking about performing arts and all all the arts. The Arts Council in Oklahoma. And I I truly believe right now what we're going through the arts they always matter but they matter a whole lot right now. Um, and, and I wanted Amber, you know, I'm trying to bring folks to, to you all that are watching this that, you know, have a little bit more pride in Oklahoma after you watch these, but also learn a little bit of, of just people that are working inside of your state government uh, that are doing some really, really good work uh, every day. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to let uh, Amber kind of, Amber, just introduce yourself a little bit about your background and then we'll kind of get into this. Well, thank you for having me. So my name is Amber Sharples. I'm the executive director of the Oklahoma Arts Council, the state agency for the arts. And I've been the, the director there for nearly seven years. Um, I'm a proud Tulsan by birth. And I grew up and I went to Tulsa Memorial and then I ended up going to Oklahoma Baptist and then the University of Oklahoma. And then ultimately I came back to the University of Oklahoma after moving to the East Coast, living in Connecticut, I really found that I missed home. I wanted to give back to Oklahoma and decided that I wanted to pursue a degree in art history. And what did I want to study? I wanted to study indigenous art of Oklahoma. And so where better to do that than in my home state? So I came home and have been really thrilled of coming back and giving back and trying to create a type of state where when I was growing up, there was this flight to leave, to have creative experiences. And what I hope that we do at the Oklahoma Arts Council is that we foster opportunities to work both professionally and to have personal habits or hobbies in the arts where people feel engaged here in this state, that we keep our brain power and creative talent here, and that we also drive and bring new talent into our state because we are such a creative space for the arts across all disciplines. Yeah, I love that. I mean, we, we all have a role in recruiting Oklahomans back to Oklahoma. Right. Uh, and if we're not, if we're not uh, focused on the arts, a lot of people, a, a lot of those generations, really next generations are demanding uh, arts uh, and demanding that quality of life. And so uh, a, a little bit about that mission, though, you, you mentioned a little bit the mission of the Arts Council. You know, people hear that the Arts Council. What exactly is that? Uh, and what is kind of your day-to-day -day at, uh, at, at the Arts Council? So we are an entity of state government. We receive state legislative dollars as well as federal funds to help us provide arts education for all Oklahomans. We wanna see arts and creative opportunities for our kids to be creative thinkers, regardless of what area they go into. So we're looking at engaging and empowering schools through arts education and arts integration strategies. And then we're also looking at the quality of life and the economic power Un unleashing the power of the arts to help organizations and, and communities leverage their unique cultural assets to make them better places to live, to help us retain those creative workers that we wanna have in our communities, and then also to make us more competitive with our neighboring states. I think as you and the governor try to make our state more competitive and rebrand and present the state in a more positive, both business and quality of life, um, community to, and state to live in, the arts are essential in that formula. No, I, I agree, it, it, they are essential and, and you know, everybody has a role to play. Um, and, and certainly you, you guys do at the Arts Council. You've been the executive director since 2013 Correct. Okay, so uh, that, that's that's a that's that's a, that's a long time inside state government. What are some of the initiatives that you've launched uh, since being there as executive director? Well, I'm really proud of um, our arts in the military initiative. This was something that we I took over in 2013, and then in 2015, looking at the landscape of how do we really talk about the arts being crucial to quality of life and really taking care of our people, we did kind of a an assessment and a survey of 
who we are as a community and realize that we were not serving our veteran and military connected families, servicemen and women, their, their family members, as well as their caregivers. Mm. And we started to work in this space. We reached out to the Oklahoma Department of Veterans Affairs and asked, can we please have a, an opportunity to have a state agency to state agency uh, collaboration and partnership and the former secretary, uh, Miles Deering, uh, you know, yeah, he took us in with open arms and gave us opportunities to unleash that. We've also been working on the state's public art program, the state's percent for art, which means any new capital expenditures on state land include arts as part of the branding. And really, I think this is one of the most um, instrumental ways that we can present Oklahoma as a open and exciting place to live, surrounded by beauty, that this is a place where you come to live and work, you take your families out to community spaces, and you have the arts as a way to nourish your souls and connect you with your neighbor. It's a good point. A lot of people don't realize this. So any, again, state building, mm -hmm. there is a law that, that, that mandates that, that it, 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 to explain that, a percentage of, uh, there has to be Oklahoma art in those buildings, correct? Correct. So the way that it works is that for any capital expenditure on state lands or in state buildings, one and a half percent capped at a half a million. So that would be for big, big projects. That percentage would go into new artwork to help brand that, that space to talk about the mission of it. But it's empowering artists to tell those stories. It makes it more aesthetically beautiful, but it also helps brand those spaces as welcoming, opening, and it also provides a lot of pride for those workers. We find that the spaces that state government employees are working in spaces that have public art, they're more efficient, they're happier, it is a morale booster. And I think whenever we're looking at ways to bring in good talent to our state, this is a mechanism, a very low cost mechanism to make our state government a very competitive place to work and provide services to our people. That's great. That's great. No Tiger King artwork. Uh, Tiger that's King right. artwork right now. That that's my only Tiger King joke. Okay, I promise. That's right. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Love it. So it, we've talked a lot, uh, Secretary of Tourism. Um, it, you, you know, when when it comes to tourism across seventy-seven counties, there is again uh, there's a relationship between the Arts Council and tourism um, overall. Uh, what are some projects that, that again, for people watching this, uh, specific ways that the Arts Council is working with uh, local tourism uh, directors and, and with the tourism department uh, in Oklahoma City as well, our, our Department of Tourism? Well, we're really excited. We've already just had conversations this week about the passport that the tourism department is, is uh, spearheading, talking about how we really drive uh, tourism to our state capital, one of only two capitals on Route 66. We want to be instrumental in that space. We take care of the artwork at the Capitol and we are working hand in hand with the tourism department to look at the post renovation Capitol as the cultural tourism gem in our state. Yes. Yes. And how do we collaborate together? How do we take care of the artwork? The artwork tells Oklahoma's history. It celebrates the events, the people, the ecology and industries that shape who we are collectively as people and the diverse cultures in our state. And it drives people into our metro area and then along Route 66 to rural communities so that they're spending money at those local gallery spaces. So we're wanting to see to connect the dots. Um, we're very uh, working hand in hand with tourism in that space. And then our cultural tourism uh, in a, in initiative, excuse me, is, is, is an economic development through the arts initiative that we have working with rural downtowns to try to engage and leverage their spaces to drive tourists and both local, national, and even international tourists to come along both Route 66 and some of our rural communities to engage in our folk and traditional arts, our makers, weavers, um, bead makers, um, just artists in all kinds of disciplines where they can't get this work in other spaces, but we really leverage Oklahoma's unique cultural kind of imprint and use that as a way to drive local economies. Uh, I, we, I get so excited um, once this is all over for us to kind of re-engage on those efforts. We had so much momentum going, yes. uh, more drivable miles of Route 66 than any other state in the country. 
and, and that relationship between the Arts Council and that cultural arts experience along that road, I, I mean, it, it's a game changer. Uh, and it, it's one of our clearest strengths as a state. Um, and so it, I've really enjoyed the partnership and I just wanted you know, people watching this to, to, to kind of understand uh, that partnership between tourism and the arts. There's a clear partnership there. And again, that's really what Oklahomans are demanding. Uh, they, they want uh, those galleries on main streets again. They want those, op those, those, those ways to be able to help and, and, and shop local. Uh, and, and you provide that, you absolutely do. So a lot going on right now when, uh, when it comes to relief, uh, federal relief, the CARES Act, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of question, we're kind of, kind of information overload in a lot of ways with um, uh, there are all these different sectors. Uh, you've done a lot of research on this. You, you are helping artists uh, and, and arts organizations around the state really digest what that CARES Act means to them. Could you spend a, a, a minute or two here to talk a little bit about directly to um, uh, those that may be watching this that are artists or, or art organizations? How is this CARES Act, uh, CARES Act uh, the federal relief legislation going to be helping them? Well, there's some really exciting opportunities for nonprofits. The first is that in that CARES Act, in the third stimulus package, it did include $75 million to the Federal Cultural Agency, the National Endowment for the Arts, where we get our federal funds. And in that, it required that a certain percentage go out and be distributed to state arts agencies. That means that the Oklahoma Arts Council will receive a sizable amount, probably between $300,000 and $400,000, that we will then be able to use and regrant to organizations, hopefully to help in the areas of job retention in the arts sector, as well as keeping these organizations afloat during this pandemic. I think we're all very understandable that artists and arts administrators are usually on the fringe of having employer-based healthcare. Many of these nonprofits are extremely small and do not include benefits. So these individuals and artists were already on a more uh, vulnerable place. And given this pandemic, we're very concerned about not only their uh, jobs, but then also their well-being. So we're working um, with the National Endowment. We're also working very closely with the Oklahoma Center for Nonprofits. Um, they are a very important resource for all nonprofits, arts and beyond, and are helping to get information about small business administration loans. There's also some relief for payroll for organizations if they're unable to make payroll. So please go to the Oklahoma Center for Nonprofits. We also have a resource page at the Arts Council's website, which is arts, A-R-T-S, .ok.gov. We have put together a resource, resource page of emergency um, opportunities for artists and arts organizations to understand what is in the stimulus so they can find the appropriate resources to help them navigate this very unprecedented and uncharted space. So again, arts.ok.gov? Correct. Okay. And it's right there on the main portal. Um, we have a big banner talking about resources in response to the pandemic. We're going to continually update this page. So follow us also on Twitter at OK Arts Council, as well as on Facebook. We are trying to use all of our social media opportunities and, and vehicles to get the word out as well. You know, I, I guess we all have to really defend inside of state government, we all have to defend our, our, our relevancy, what, what, what we provide to a state. But, but, you know, I'll give you that opportunity, you know, here to, to really answer that question. Why is it important to have an arts council uh, in any state? But why, why is it important? Uh, I know it's important now, uh, and I know it's important 365, 24-7, but, but why is it so important to have an arts council? I think the Arts Council, the intrinsic value of the arts is that they first and foremost nurture our souls, they make us creative thinkers, they really connect us with the human to human touch that we need, and with four out of five Americans at this point working in isolation, I think more than ever, if we didn't believe in the intrinsic power of the arts to nurture us internally, we now know why, because being socially disconnected, we realize how much we are absorbing and consuming in terms of culture right now, listening to music, um, reading the books, literary arts, poems, all of these things are giving us peace and helping us to connect with one another and in nourishing and giving us opportunities to help our children navigate the space. In terms of government support, 
you know, a lot of times I get the question, well, why doesn't private sector step in? One of the things that government support for the arts does is that we don't have an agenda for our marketing or for our branding of a corporation that a corporate uh, sponsorship might be for local communities. And so with a public funding, we are looking at equity. We are looking at individuals who are geographically isolated in rural communities getting the same high quality arts experiences and arts education as those in maybe urban communities. And not every community has maybe an oil and gas um, chapter or headquarters or corporation or an individual who cares about the arts who can really come in and support that. And so we are doing that as seed funding. And then those organizations can then leverage the private dollar support. So we are looking at, does the public funding, how does that really leverage private investment in the arts? But when times are tough, like right now, we can see that private sector support can't always step in and make sure that everyone has the kind of access because we care about all Oklahomans equally. Right. Everyone should have high quality arts experiences to keep them as a lifelong learner, enhance their quality of life, and give them economic development opportunities. And, and you mentioned the uh, great answer, by the way. That's the right answer, Amber. That was a very good answer, defending yourself. Um, it, you mentioned all of the great, and, and I was really very impressed. I didn't realize how much the Arts Council did in schools uh, and really access to the arts. We all know uh, our public school system in Oklahoma and really in every state, you hear the stories about arts programs being cut. Uh, you hear uh, performing arts and the arts in general. Um, it, it, maybe a couple of examples of, of what ways that you're, you, you were helping schools, obviously schools not in session right now, but, but ways that you were helping schools and, and will be helping schools in the future when it comes to resources, arts resources. Yes, we had a pilot program that we did this year that is still ongoing. We had a classroom supply grant. We found that arts programs across the state were not even able to provide the essential supplies to provide painting, theater, and other types of arts programming. So we had a very in, kind of an innovative way that we tried to respond to the field where we had a $500 stipend that we gave to, organize, to schools statewide. And that was a huge hit because we found school system after school system. I just mailed the check to Holdenville Public Schools Yep. Um, for their first semester of arts programming. And we're trying to salvage these programs that really serve and care for our students and really nourish their souls and their creative, their creative thinking. We know that as students get older, the more they are, uh, tend to not be in that creative space. And yet when we want them to go out into the private sector or in the public sector and work, we're asking them to bring that creativity to help us solve problems, just like we are with this pandemic. Yeah. How do we then empower people? So we're also working with a lot of organizations like the Arts Council of Tulsa, uh, the Arts Council of Oklahoma City, and even smaller organizations like the Bartlesville Symphony and yeah. others to provide local arts education to schools. We did that for the three-fourths of the year that happened, and we're trying to figure out how to fulfill and then help our organizations put their content on virtual platforms in order for parents and homeschoolers and the new homeschoolers to be able to engage those resources and use them in, in people's homes to continue that's, the creativity of their kids. That's great. That's really great. So you, again, um, you're helping those schools, again, direct checks to school mm -hmm. districts like Holdenville and others. You know, moms and dads and grandparents that may be watching this right now that are looking for access to the arts. Uh, not just coloring books, but but I know, you know, I've seen a lot of that online. Hey, download the coloring books. That's really cool. I like it. Uh, but a couple resources that you might uh, uh, might want to share as far as good places for people, uh, families that are looking for arts resources over the next couple months. Yes. Um, you know, these aren't, this isn't a comprehensive list, but the Arts Council Oklahoma City, and that's Arts Council, A-R-T-S-C-O-U-N-C-I-L-O-K-C. Uh, dot, I believe it's org or com. It's the Arts Council of Oklahoma City. If you look that up in Google, they have wonderful access of arts education opportunities. Um, also, the Arts Council and Art, the Oklahoma Arts Council, our website has resources about the capital art. Even yeah. though the capital art is not on display, 
we have very uh, robust online um, experiences for our kids to understand the artwork that is normally there. So right. if you go to arts.ok.gov and then about at the art at the Capitol, there are online resources that are there about uh, hundreds of works of art, teaching science, math, and other um, arts integration strategies for kids. Um, also, the Tulsa Arts and Humanities Council has good resources. And then just this morning, I saw great information from the Fred Jones Museum of Art, the Fred Jones Junior Museum of Art at the University of Oklahoma, my alma mater, I'll be completely candid, um, and is doing great uh, work putting out some of their online resources for students. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope with this, you know, there, there's, there is going to be good that is going to come from this. I, I firmly believe that. And, and, and I hope one of, them, one of the things is, is that we realize how important the arts are, uh, mm -hmm. that it helps museums be innovative. Uh, it helps our arts organizations be innovative. Uh, and really, hopefully, you know, tells just Oklahomans how important it is to support local Main Street galleries uh, and, and their performing arts programs. Uh, I certainly hope I, I'm hearing a whole lot more about it online and in the conversations that I'm having. And it's, it's one of the many reasons we wanted to have you on. Any final thoughts uh, uh, before we, uh, we end our, our latest Okla Proud interview with Amber Sharples? Oh, well, thank you for the invitation. And I would just challenge everyone to maybe use this time to challenge yourself in a new space. The Oklahoma City Ballet, for example, is providing free ballet classes for parents and students alike, hey, you can do that in the safety of your own home where no one can see you. Yeah. And yet you can really challenge yourself to be both active and then challenge yourself in a new way. And there are hundreds of organizations that are trying to be responsive by putting out, out their virtual content. Please follow the Oklahoma Arts Council um, at OK Arts Council on Twitter or our Facebook page. We are putting out those virtual experiences as we see them. So you can engage with your kids or you can try a new art form because this is the time to maybe challenge yourself and uh, kind of unlock your own creativity and, nour and nourish your own soul as we're trying to figure out how to stay more connected. That's, that's great. Uh, so I can take, I should be taking an online ballet class. Thing, that's right. right? I, hey, if, if you should record yourself and then put it out huh? on social media. But they're, 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 they, may, they may go viral in the wrong way, but uh, I, I love it that they're doing that. I absolutely love it. Amber, thank you so, so much for this again. I, I'm bringing folks on that uh, give me a little bit more pride too uh, in the state, and you certainly do. So thank you so much for what you do and, and uh, look forward to our partnership moving forward. Thanks for everybody watching again. We will uh, be back very soon with another uh, episode of our Oakville Proud interviews. Amber, thanks again. Thank you.